We're here with another Teacher of the Year profile, and we're speaking with Kimberly Montero, who is uh, the Teacher of the Year for the Natomas Unified School District. Welcome and congratulations. Thank you very much. So tell us about yourself. Tell us uh, what you teach and at what school. Mm -hmm. Hey, um, my name is Kimberly Montero, and I teach kindergarten. And this is my 14th year in kindergarten, and I've, this will be my 24th year of teaching. Mm. So tell us about kindergarten. Um, why do you enjoy that so much? Because you've been there a long time. Yes. Um, it is just so much fun every day just to see the excitement in their eyes, in their voices, that they're so excited to learn anything and everything. And it's contagious because I'm excited to present all of the information and make it valuable learning for them. So that's why I love kindergarten. And it's an opportunity to get them started off in the beginning of their educational career on a right foot. Because you get, you get some kids who've had preschool and some yes. who haven't. Yes. So you've got that mixture right there. And you have yes. um, English learners. Yes. And you put all that into the mix, it makes it a little bit of a challenge. Yes. But it is so rewarding to see where they come in at and when they leave and just the progress throughout the year. And that they're really dedicated learners. They want to work. They want to please you. They want to learn and grow. So, it's so now this year, uh, mm -hmm. you've, you're dealing with Common Core. Yes. So what are your thoughts on that and how you're going to be kind of integrating that with um, your curriculum? Mm -hmm. I'm really excited. This summer, I was part of the team to align the curriculum with the Common Core standards. So it's going to be a lot of fun and a challenge to be able to incorporate a lot of the skills and a lot of the techniques we've learned before years ago back into the program and be able to just have fun and make it real and relevant to the children. So I'm excited as well because all across the United States people are going to be working together as far as the same um, standards for everyone and it's, it's exciting to me. Explain why you feel that's important that they're all on the same page. Yes. Um, we're trying to get ready, get our kids ready for the workforce, for college, and we want to compete with other people in the world. So if all of us are on the same, have the same standards across the United States, it won't matter when one of my children leave and go to another state, they'll be working the same on the same things. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. Because really students have been at a disadvantage, you know, e even, even going from one school to another yes. in the same district. Yes. Because of maybe at a different pace. Yes, yes. So it's exciting to know that not only will my fellow schools in my district within the Sacramento County and the state, but all across the United States will be like in a united, well, most of them will be in a united front. So let's talk about kindergarten and, and uh, working with, you, you've got a wide range of, of types of kids. Mm -hmm. So you know, what do you do to kind of motivate some of these kids who are really you know, kind of sheepish or maybe a little scared? Mm -hmm. What are some of the things you do? What are your tricks? Well, first of all, I let them know by my actions and my words that I care and that they're safe in my classroom and I am there for them, even in the class and outside of the class. My students know I have a saying that once you're my kid, you're always my kid. And I say that, my kids finish the sentence. Um, they, I even have students writing that in their essay writing in kindergarten. Mm -hmm. um, so I provide that safety for them. Um, I'm consistent with my words. I follow through in what I say. I provide high expectations for my children. And they know that I'm there and I won't waver. I'm consistent. Mm -hmm. And it makes them comfortable. It makes them comfortable, willing to take risks in their words, in their activities, um, building relationships with one another. Yes. And at that level, too, it's also often the first introduction to education mm -hmm. for the parents. Yes. Explain the importance of really building a good relationship with the families. Yes. Um, I've been at my school for 23 years now, and it'll be 24 or 23. And I love my school because I feel like I am a part of the community. I've been there so long. And with that, I go to their homes. I um, meet with the parents even when it's not required. I let them know that I care. I talk to parents when they um, need support or help. Um, it's just Bannon Creek is a part of me. And I wouldn't want to be anywhere else but there. And you know, we kind of talked about motivating students and getting them prepared 
What about motivating parents? Because that can also be tricky. Yes. What do you do? Yes. At the beginning of the year and throughout the year, I let them know it's a, we're a team, all three of us, the, the parents, myself, and the, chi the child. And I want this year to be successful. Um, letting them know that it's okay if they have questions to approach me. I'm very approachable. Um, letting them know that I'm there to support them and that any time that they need additional help or um, they struggle with their child, let me know because I'm part of the family now for that year and for years on. Mm -hmm. Well, like you said, once they're your kid, they're always That's your kid, right? right? That's right. Mm -hmm. And I firmly believe that. So you've been teaching for 24 years. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of changes over those years have you seen? Yes. Um, of course, the curriculum has changed, the expectations. Um, and I'm really excited now because now we all have these standards. That's why I'm really excited about Common Core. Um, I've seen the, the use of technology change, um, having computers in the classroom, and now we're getting Mac Airs and, and iPads. So I'm really excited about that because the children have that at home. So I need to step it up and incorporate it in the classroom. So technology and standards are a big thing. So you're learning as well. Oh, yes. Learning all the time. Yes. So what motivated you to become a teacher in the first place? Mm -hmm. When I was a kid, I'd always play school with my family. And of course, I was the teacher. Mm -hmm. um, I taught Sunday school since beginning when I was 15. Mm -hmm. um, just the love of just imparting information to people and watching them grow and be really excited about it. That was just really something that I, I treasured. And I had awesome teachers growing up that I connected to, that cared about me, not just as a kid, but as Kimberly. Mm -hmm. you know? So I wanted to do the same for others. Is there any one special teacher in your, in your history? There are several that, that rank right there, and that about three or four that, to me, really made a difference in my life. And do you find yourself borrowing bits and pieces of what they, they used, that you use in your classroom? Yes, yes. It, it's um, remembering what they did for me, and I could do the same for my kids. Do you find that the, the teaching the, the, the younger folks, uh, there's a bit more of a challenge in some ways, because you know, you're not only teaching the curriculum, but you're mm -hmm. teaching all the other, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. whether it's stand in line or mm -hmm. you know, keep your hands to yourself and those types right. of things. Yes, it is, it is different because I am having to teach them all of the aspects of school in the very first year. But, you know, I say my kindergartners were very much like my sixth graders. So a lot of the same things that I did for the sixth graders, I do for my kindergartners. Mm -hmm. So when, you decide, when did you decide uh, to make the shift to uh, kindergarten? A and how difficult of a transition mm -hmm. was that for you? Was there a real learning curve? Mm -hmm. um, I decided after 10 years, I'd had a, 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 a difficult year, challenging year, I should say. And I was ready for something different. Mm -hmm. And it just happened that a kindergarten teacher was looking for a partner, and I moved, and it's been an awesome experience. Mm -hmm. I love it. Well, that's great. So mm -hmm. uh, what would you say to somebody who's considering education mm -hmm. as a profession? Mm -hmm. uh, what kind of a sales pitch would you make to them? Yeah, I'd tell them, make sure that you're ready to give of your heart. You're ready to serve, because that's what we do when we're at school. We serve our parents, our students, and we give of our heart every single day. And no matter what challenges you may face, you can make it because think about your kids and what is best for them. And just push through. You can do it without a doubt. And, and that's kind of a feeling that you keep with you too when you're... Oh, yes. So how does it feel to be a teacher of the year? What's that mean to you? It's, at first it was kind of a shock and I was kind of, it was kind of surreal. But um, I'm really honored that my district felt that I would take this and run with it and take that charge and willing to share everything that I have with other teachers. And what's it feel like to be kind of a representative of all teachers well, in your district? Yes, um, it, it's an honor and I will take that charge to do so and it's another, another aspect of my teaching career that I've never experienced and then I'm excited about the ride that I will take with it. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll be a little bit of a ride. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations to you. Thank you We've so We've been much. speaking with Kimberly Montero, who is the Teacher of the Year for the Natomas Unified School District. Thanks for being with us. Thank you.